So I've been a dentist for over 50 years and I decided to be a dentist while I was living in England. So how did I get involved in prevention? And this means helping people avoid unnecessary dental treatments. And when you learn about prevention, the sooner you start, the sooner it's possible to actually have almost no treatments for life. My youngest daughter is the beneficiary of this. She has had minimal number of x-rays, no cleanings, no dental cleanings in her entire life. And she has virtually, I mean, she has perfect teeth. She did suffer a little bit as her wisdom teeth came through for a week or two, but that's the full extent of her dental experiences. And I know dentists may be cringing at this, but how can I as a dentist be so sure that we can prevent dental disease? And it's because I've really studied it for my entire career. And I'd like to just take a moment to explain how it sort of happened. One of the things about growing up in England back in the day when I grew up in the 50s, children were taken to the dentist and the dentist didn't believe that little baby teeth had any nerves inside them. And my brother had a lot of cavities and there was a lot of screaming and it was a very uncomfortable experience. So much so that in England, if you misbehaved, mothers would be heard to say to their children, sit down and behave or I'll take you to the dentist. The dentist was feared. It was a very austere environment. And I think I grew up detesting going to the dentist. When I worked at Guy's Hospital, which is part of King's College in London, um, I saw for the first time how bad people's teeth could be. Most of the treatments we did in Guy's Hospital were huge fillings with silver mercury amalgams. We were doing a lot of extractions. I became really competent at extractions, which was quite rewarding, but not the career I wanted. I tried that for a little bit at uh, East Grinstead Hospital. But I finally decided I would take myself on a trip to Switzerland. And when I arrived in Switzerland, I was so fortunate to have a job in a dental office where prevention was generated and motivated by the payment system. Patients, the bigger their filling, paid or contributed more towards the filling. The insurance system benefited those who had minimal treatment. I actually ended up doing mostly extractions in Switzerland, which is where I learned before every extraction and after every extraction in that practice, we would recommend that our patients ate a diet that was high fiber and included pineapple and fresh yogurt. Well, years and years later, to fast forward, I came to America and suggested pineapple and fresh yogurt to patients and my peers looked at me as if I was crazy. When the internet came about, I was able to do a Google search because I knew that when my patients ate fresh pineapple and yogurt, their recovery from extractions had been miraculously quick. And if you look up fresh pineapple today, you will find out that the brom bromelain, vitamin A, vitamin K, and vitamin C is all a part of fresh pineapple and that these ingredients or, or, or phytonutrients together speed bone and skin healing. So I learned a lot about diet in Switzerland. I learned that if you finish meals with a tooth protective food and you didn't eat or drink between meals, the oral health would become better. The other story that interested me in prevention was that my own mother, when she was 45 years old, was told to have all her teeth taken out by her dentist. And I was at dental school at the time and they had just done a pilot study in a convent with nuns and they had discovered that the earlier a woman had all her teeth extracted, the higher her risk of dementia. And this was shocking to me because I had aunts in the family, most of the women in my family, had had all their teeth taken out at about 40, 45 years old, and they had ended up with early onset dementia. So I told my mother not to have her teeth taken out and that she should come to the school, the dental school where I was, and that we would clean her teeth and I would figure out a way for her to keep her teeth healthy. 
And at that time, it was before the era of hygienists. There were no periodontal specialists. I was the best hope my mother had. And in the process of trying to figure out how we could help her keep her teeth, I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of interrogating patients in my office over the years. And really, it was my mother's need to keep her teeth healthy that allowed me to discover what I now call my complete mouth care system. And the good news for my mother was that, yes, she lost one or two teeth, she had some crowned, uh, but for 50 years, she maintained those same teeth. And when she finally passed away at age 95, that was 50 years from the time she had been told to have those teeth taken out. So we had basically helped my mother, not only, I believe, keep her teeth with minimal dental intervention, but also she was able to maintain her body health. How much our mouth health impacts our body, I think we are still understanding. We certainly know that gum disease influences heart health, arthritis, brain health, and pregnancy health. So as I went along through my career, this was always my mission. I started an organization in America called AOSH, the American Academy for Oral Systemic Health. This is to teach doctors, chiropractors, hygienists, and dentists this interaction and get us all on the same page. We also have learned so much recently by bacterial testing. I'm a huge fan of looking at salivary health and determining how many bad bacteria are multiplying somewhere in your mouth because that indicates you're likely a candidate with pocketing. And correct gum massage, correct use of my complete mouth care system, I have discovered in 12 weeks can get rid of those multiplying bacteria, can actually change the levels of inflammation in your body. So if you've been told you have a heart problem, or if you're suffering with arthritis, or you're pregnant, I so encourage you to learn more about my complete mouth care system, the system that I developed using over-the-counter products that are used in a sequence and what they do is they speed natural healing. They speed the body's own processes that literally Velcro up your pocketing. If you have pocketing, it can, it, the little fibers can regrow and those pockets can go away. You can cure periodontal disease, but you need the right kind of toothbrushes. I, I did research to find which toothbrushes work the best. I did uh, a lot of interrogating patients, measuring pH of, of a whole 70 waiters in a restaurant in Rochester, New York, just to understand who has acidic pH. Why does the pH or the acidity of our mouth change? I discovered that women's mouths are different from men's. I studied pediatric dentistry. I worked with a gentleman who did a lot of research in, in South America, giving xylitol, this amazing sugar, to pregnant women. And they gave it to these women during their pregnancy so that their mouths would be clean and healthy once their babies were born. And then they tracked the health, the oral health of the children born to the women who had eaten xylitol. And they discovered that these children had 85% less cavities, no dentistry, no fluoride, nothing except that they ended up being born to mothers who had healthy mouths. So if you're pregnant, I beg you to get your mouth healthy. My goal for the future is to create videos and help for mothers and families to learn how to look after their teeth using xylitol using my complete mouth care system to reverse problems they may have, understanding how to test their mouths, to become empowered so they're not just putting band-aids over their teeth. They're not just putting a sealant on to try to stop decay. 
they're really confident that their mouth is healthy. And when children grow up with healthy mouths, if a child has a healthy mouth at four years old, the bacteria at four years old will get transferred to the new permanent teeth as they erupt around five, six years old. And if the grooves, don't be fearful if you have deep grooves in baby teeth in the, or in the adult teeth, because these grooves can be populated with healthy bacteria. Don't live in fear. Don't live in the old paradigm. We have such a new way of thinking about oral health, and that is since 2007. So if you look at any studies that are telling you to do something that were done before 2007, then they're probably working on an old paradigm of killing oral bacteria, of trying to scrape away oral bacteria, of blocking the grooves in teeth so that cavities won't form. Today we know if we support oral health, we can move forward and our good bacteria in our mouths will take care of the bad ones. My last dental cleaning was 45 years ago. And it didn't begin with me thinking I would go this long. I didn't know anybody who hadn't had a cleaning in a couple of years. And I decided I would try it out on myself. So I began going longer between cleanings. And after two years, I of course went to a dentist, had them check my teeth, everything was fine. I asked the question, do I need a cleaning? And was told, no, your teeth are great. And this has gone on now, year after year, decade after decade. And last year, I went in Austin, Texas, where I live, to a very eminent dentist in Austin, an experienced gentleman, and asked the same question, do I need a cleaning? And he told me, no, Ellie, your teeth look great. We talked about the potential of doing a crown at the back, but there was no need for cleaning. That is because every day I take care of my oral health to support the good bacteria that maintain healthy biofilm. If you'd like to learn more about this, I have a book called Mouth Care Comes Clean. If you want to try to figure out why your teeth may be deteriorating or did deteriorate, I have a book called Kiss Your Dentist Goodbye, which is less about modern theory of good bacteria and more about why you may have dental problems. So these are two separate books, and I think they appeal to two separate audiences. If you're at the beginning of your journey and you're just getting into xylitol, learn how xylitol works. If you're desperate and you have teeth that are falling apart, just get on my complete mouth care system. Just do these things and then you will see the changes that occur. So my journey's been long, my journey's been exciting. I'm delighted to have helped so many people. It began with a slide carousel and a projector screen at a prenatal clinic in Eastbourne back in the 1970s. And today we're reaching Singapore, the Middle East, I've got friends in South Africa and, and in New Zealand and Australia, all using the complete mouth care system that I recommend and seeing improvements. So I am just delighted to have this opportunity to share what I've learned and help everybody become empowered and enjoy ultimate oral health.